know, I wanted to say some things, in, you know, um, to the end time church and saints and and to anyone with ears to hear. Um, to anyone with ears to hear. We, uh, the, uh, end times have two dichotomies in emphasis. Okay, two dichotomies, uh, actually, it's more than two, but it's, it's ultimately all tied to the one dichotomy between good and evil, God and the devil. You know? And I want to speak about love. Um, love. And the scriptures say God is love. Love has demonstrated throughout the entire history of the world and different actions associated with each and every um, situation and circumstance. And the, both the children of good, of God, of love and the children of the devil of evil and fighting it out throughout the history of the world throughout ancient times to this very day God and the devil is as ubiquitous as good and evil and they are discussed throughout the entire recorded history of mankind and and presently observable reality so when you start denying the existence of either one uh, the rest of sane and perceptive humanity looks at you like as if you might benefit uh, from a straight jacket and a rubber room because you are in complete denial of observable reality ubiquitous observable reality when you deny the existence of God and the devil good and evil okay and so whatever you're connoting the Bible to mean when it discusses such things just simply means, if you're thinking that it's somehow ridiculous or laughable, it just simply means that, you know, whatever you're connoting that you read, whatever you're presently imagining, is ridiculous and laughable. And because the Bible, the word of the living God, and defines observable reality. In other words, his words not only um, brought into being um, everything, but sustains everything. And the word of God, the power of God, the presence of God. You say when you deny he exists, and you're denying observable reality. You're, you're denying the accumulated knowledge of mankind, and you're and denying the most authoritative written record in the entire creation of the Holy Bible. Okay? And no other book has undergone much scrutiny. If you're laughing at the Holy Bible, it means you know nothing or next to nothing about it, or whatever you think you know is completely fallacious. And completely fallacious. In the wars fought between the angels and the devils to put that book into your hands are epic over the ages, over the eons. And so show some respect and take it for a fresh read and ask God Almighty, the author of it, to give you his understanding of his words. And when you do, there's there's a proclivity these days for people um, defining God as love and to, to connote that in only, um, say, a few of, of the, the demonstrations of love throughout the entire Holy Bible and throughout the re recorded history of mankind to this very day. Now, I want to tell you that sometimes the children of the devil, the children of evil, um, having done their evil deeds, um, how do you say, everything that is crime harms in creation. In other words, harms souls around you. Every single sin, every single crime hurt somebody to a greater or lesser extent uh, can even kill them um, um, in the body or in the flesh right? so um, sin and crime is 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 of is evil and of the devil 
and if you don't repent of it or if you enjoy it or have no intention of repenting it I should say from it in other words if you enjoy and have no intention of ever stopping doing evil you are a child of the devil now the child the children of God the children of God of good of love have at times have been so maltreated by the children of the devil that God and his children and actually take vengeance and I'm here to tell you and all of you who are thinking that hell doesn't exist Gehenna or Sheol um, whether you th connote it as the grave or the unseen or the unknown I'm telling you there is a region of the band and there are um, places divinely divine that you do not want to go now, God himself says, Vengeance is mine. And I am telling you that when I was a little babe in diapers in Christ, I imagined that Daddy, the, the loving father that embraced me and, and called me son, um, was so good is so loving and so awesome because of my own relationship with him that I deemed that if there was a hell um, he was doing his best to free everybody from it and that's what the gospel is about my friends if you don't understand heaven and hell on earth fighting it out all around you uh, you don't know very much about reality and you definitely don't know next to nothing about the history of the world. Good and evil has been fighting it out. God and the devil, the children of God and the children of the devil have been fighting it out on this bloody battlefield. Age after age. Eon after eon. Then Christ descended into this bloody battlefield, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and taking upon himself humility and meekness, walked among the damned, faced the devils and cast them aside in a word. Faced the demons and devils, the legions of darkness on this bloody battlefield. When you speak about the Lord Jesus Christ and the God who calls himself love, I suggest you take a deeper and more serious look. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, is no mere mortal. And when he trod upon this earth, Stand aside, devils! They trembled and shook for fear and terror. And they said, Have you come to torment us before the time? So when a brother, sister, Anybody in Christ has been deceived by the devil into thinking there is no Gehenna, no flames of damnation. When they have been deceived by the devils into thinking there is no more consequence from God other than a swift, e total eradication and destruction, that is when you remind them that he said, Vengeance is mine. And whenever you hear some fool say, If God was good, there's no way all this evil on earth could exist. You remind them of that fact. That for those choosing to do evilly and wickedly without repentance, Incur not just divine 
justice, divine sentence, but divine wrath, divine vengeance. Now, if you don't understand how love can be jealous or can be vengeful, then you don't understand love. Because if you had come face to face with the legions of demons and devils that I have, and that the Almighty has faced on this battle, then you would know why he said, Vengeance is mine. Your brothers and sisters, the mighty angels, the legions, and the Lord of hosts, armies, have endured for a season during the journey of their incarnation the great hardship, suffering, and evil. Evil that most of you who deny the existence of the flames of damnation have not encountered yourself, or you would not deny that divine region. As surely as there is a heaven above, there is a hell below. And you don't want to go there. And don't let some fool deny that it exists. Because I tell you that when the damned are cast into the flames of damnation, those they harmed along the way witness it, not just the Almighty. And I'm telling you that they do not shed a tear when the damned finally reap what they have sown. They do not shed a tear at all. So, if you, like a fool that I was, thought God was doing everything he could to empty hell, he is. He is. Because he came down into the flames of damnation on this bloody battlefield of those tormented by their vices. He descended into the depths of darkness and flame, into death and Hades burning. And he said, Lo! Will you with ears to hear, hear my voice, and hear it now? I have the keys to set you free. I hold the keys to unloose those chains of damnation that hold you here. Who wants to ascend out of the flames of darkness and madness? Who can hear my voice? I hold the keys of the kingdom. And I have come to set you free. So when somebody doesn't come running, when the Lord God Almighty calls, you're mad. You're mad. He means that you enjoy the flames of damnation. It means you endure not just death and destruction all around you, but your own demise, 
your own suffering. You're mad. So when the Lord says, I have come to set the captives free, then let one and all who can hear his voice calling, Come! Come while you can! Come while you yet draw breath! And let him loose your shackles, so that you may ascend into the heights above! Yet it is not when you breathe your last, but it is soon as you let the Lord of glory set you free. So if you can hear his voice, then you say, Yes, Lord Jesus, I want to be free. I want to be free right now from this hell, this hellish suffering and torment here on earth, this bloody battlefield. Leap me into the heights above, Lord. Let me see things as you do. And when you ascend out of the flames of damnation, into the heights above is there to behold paradise in all its glory. It is there that you will understand exactly what he means. And he says, I am the gate into the pastures of Elysium, into the pastures of paradise, into the kingdom of God. I alone am the way, says the Lord Jesus Christ, the truth and the everlasting life. If you can hear my voice speaking through this one to you today, bow the knee. I am King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I am not some fiction, I am not some imaginary creature. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Bow the knee if you can hear my voice. you with a thousand crowns. Glory will fill your soul. You will rejoice with me in eternity. King of kings and lord of lords, I do not lie. And let the wise come let all who have ears to hear come. Come unto me, you who are burdened and oppressed this day. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. You will find rest to your souls forever in the pastures of Elysium, in the fields where the embrasures of the gods exist. And do not think that you are all a, a mere fleshly entity. Let no one deceive you. You are not an animal. If you think you are and act like one, you will be put in a cage. And it's of your own making, you who dare deny the truth. Everyone will reap what they sow. My word is bound to my creation. You cannot escape it. You cannot challenge it. It just is. 
So let the wise come, and let all who have ears to hear come. And cease from this madness. Cease from this self-destructive madness I see this day before me. Oh, shall my wrath be kindled, and shall my fury be poured out. The choice is yours to make, sons of men, daughters of men, for good or for evil, for life or for death, for life everlasting or destruction. My love, my blessings, my bounty, or my wrath and my vengeance. So choose wisely and let none deceive you the voice that the Lord has spoken this day. <laughs>